Season 2, Episode Number 16, The Inner Storm of Stress. If you're wild about historic places that are reinvented as hotels and really honor their past, and furthermore, if you're visiting Chicago this summer, get smitten with the Chicago Athletic Association. Let me tell you this. It was once an elite private membership club. The 1893 Venetian Gothic landmark was restored in 2015, and it's really given a new life as a hotel. And here's why I'm sure you're going to dig it too. They revamped and preserved historic details like the original ironwork, carved work, and while updating the space for a modern traveler like yourself. Rooms, they have a classy club room vibe. Think leather, wool, brass, and wood. And here's what. What hotel do you know that has seven places to eat and libate? But this is the kicker. The rooftop terrace has all the panoramic city views, stellar food, and you know what? A drink list that are part of this summer's rooftop goals. So look, nab a sweet rate on Hotel Tonight. And this is an app that I've told you about before that I am religious with using when I book my travel. You need to bookmark this particular spot, the Chicago Athletic Association Hotel. Add that to your favorites list because you need to make sure you bucket this one. Add this app right now to your iPhone, to your Android, and use the promo code N as in Nina, I as in India, B as in boy, A as in alpha, B as in boy, E as in elephant, L as in love. And you know what? Why you're going to love it is because you're going to get $25 off your first booking using the Hotel Tonight app. Today's a Keep It 100 moment, so I'll make it short, to the point, and really with my Keep It 100 flavor. But I thought this was appropriate since it's Stress Awareness Month, in case you didn't know. And I wanted to give you just a short lesson and takeaway that goes hand in hand with this monthly celebration. And if you didn't know, stress stands for someone trying to repair every single situation. And if you're human, you will always be undergoing some kind of stress in your lifetime. And, you know, I always talk about me and my story. And today, I actually last week, I just came back from vacation and realized, you know what, Nina, you waited too long. And that totally goes against your mantra. And what does that mean for those of you listening? It means exactly that. I waited too long to go on vacation and enjoy the benefits of a vacation. So this was basically a sleep fest. I went to another country to sleep, eat, and SHIT. But too long in Nina's life may mean something that's totally different to yours and someone else's life. But I realize now that my cap is not six months, especially with everything that I have going on in my life. I really need to really go back to my roots, as I've said in other travel type episodes, that three months is the ideal therapy for me, travel therapy, stress therapy. And six months during this vacation means that I'm pushing it and pushing it in a bad way. And so my challenge is, is when my body goes in this state of stress, the net effect of waiting too long is snowballing negative effects. And this cascades to my mind and my body and just in the end, my personality. I just don't become this nice person. You know, I'm short tempered. I'm quick to be a little flippant, but like flippant in a professional savage kind of way. (laughs) 
But in any case, it's not all good. And when I was on vacation, I had to peel back the layers like one, two, three at a time, which meant this, that I racked up six months of crap that I had to reset. I had to reset six months worth of stress, anxiety, and just catching up on being tired. And there's nothing like being tired and sleeping your life away when you're on vacation. I mean, I kind of like doing a little bit of everything, and which I did. I mean, not to say that I slept 24-7, but I didn't feel like I was the best company, put it that way once um, the end of the day came and the end of the day like I was toast easily by nine like eight or nine o'clock and I slept in every morning and sleeping in for me is no joke like seven eight o'clock so I'm thankful I got eight hours plus but at the same time you know I was repairing the reserves I didn't even get to the root of me So instead of feeling charged, I felt, you know, extremely tired during this vacation. And once I let the adrenaline take a backseat, it just seemed like everything flowed from the inside out. Like it was a release, a slow release of negative energy out of my body. And that started from just the spa massage I had when I landed to going to the beach, bike riding, again, eating, and just being in good company with my girlfriend. So my question to you listening is, what is your stress tolerance levels? Like, do you have one? Do you identify with having one? Which brings us to the point of Stress Awareness Month, being aware of stress. And I didn't because, you know, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going until you self-destruct. But it's a welcomed, friendly reminder to inform people about stress and provides them with revisiting the tools or your own personal ways to counteract and manage it. So as we near the end of the week, I thought it would be worthwhile to revisit and kind of level set, reset, and kind of be honest with yourself and ascertain how you um, recognize those stress levels and provide tips to others on how you de-stress. And I think it's helpful to hear how other people tap into their stress levels and recognize those triggers, whether they ignore them or they manage it on a regular basis because they know it's not really going to go away because the elements in their life are constant and so the way that they manage those elements in their lives is through their own personal routines and I'm not going to reveal what they are I thought it would be helpful just to tee it up for you guys so I'll go first and the way I ascertain my own stress levels I mentioned earlier like I just get just catty I get snippy I my attitude changes. I'm not as relaxed in my responses, um, whether it's to text messages, emails, or even face to face. And I guess I've embraced the whole breathing techniques, right? Just kind of and hearing myself do that and constantly incorporate that in every hour of the day. But on a grander scale, It's a mini vacation, right? That's my therapy. I've told you guys, water is my therapy. And the goal is to remove myself from familiar settings and avoid that trap of just being in, like, staycations don't work for me because I'm still in the house. I'm still in the same city. I'm still around the same people. And all of that still contributes to my stress levels and distractions. So the goal is to get out of here like see something different Um, being in a different environment where I'm not encouraged to fall into that same familiar trap and I'll give you a good example about water being my therapy I went to the Grand Canyon last year and 
you know, there's so many people from around the world that go to the Grand Canyon. So I go and I'm like, ooh, ah, whatever. But I wasn't as ooh and odd out because I could only get so much out of mountains, trees. I didn't see any water, <laughs> which made my vacation feel like it was half empty. So knowing what I know about myself, I always incorporate a beach destination. So again, these are my personal habits um, of how I de-stress. Other quick, short examples is playing sports. I mean, tennis for me is definitely a stress release. Eating, whether it's good or bad, is another stress release. Like when I want ice cream and my mind is telling me that, even though my stomach might not like it because I'm lactose intolerant to a certain degree, I don't care. And I think that's the goal, right? Is to have those I don't care moments. <laughs> so just remember that as you head into the weekend, you know, have that I don't care moment. Learn what women are thinking, but not saying out loud. On this podcast, Nina chats about socially awkward real life moments and sensitive girly stuff most girlfriends talk about on a daily basis. Think of Nina as your go-to girlfriend. Next, you're going to meet Randy. She is very familiar with her triggers. And I was actually impressed with her routine because this is something that is consistent in her lifestyle. And she doesn't deviate from it because she recognizes that these forces in her life are not going away. And not to say they're bad energy, but it's energy she recognizes as not going away. And I'll let her explain. I think I get stressed out over the normal 20-something things like work and money and a full calendar and pressure to live up to all those societal standards. Um, I'm lucky in that I kind of thrive under stress. Like, oh, okay, freaking bring it on. But sometimes I get so overwhelmed that I need to take a step back and start prioritizing. Like, is making room for that networking event on an already busy weeknight really is that important? Probably not. Do I really need to squeeze in brunch with a friend of me? Nope. Prioritization, girl. Save the time and money and your sanity. I guess that's kind of my stress release method, prioritization and me time. I always have to remind myself to unplug once or twice a week, even if it's just a few hours to read a book or something. I also see a therapist every other week or so since I've been diagnosed with anxiety, and that's one of those things that's worth the time and money to me. So between talking to a therapist and getting in physical exercise, I do a lot of cardio at my gym, and I'm a core power yoga black tag member. Those things really help to alleviate my stress. I think that the biggest thing is always just taking care of yourself, both mentally and physically, um, and reminding yourself that, hey, the world is not going to end just because I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed right now. In this next clip, we learn there are many, many ways we as women manage stress. And it's not always like a clear cut one definition type of answer. Malia explains her regimen to manage stress happens in two parts. So the first part you're going to hear is what I refer to as a confession, because I think when we have those quote unquote evil thoughts, <laughs> so it's only fair as humans that we have these evil thoughts. And Malia talks about her stresses when it comes to finances and being a wife, being married and going through the stresses of finance, because, you know, after all, it is one of the reasons people get divorced nowadays, right? It's money reasons and communication. So she goes to share the type of thoughts she was having. And I think it's important to show how universal we think about escaping the stresses of money. So I used to get really stressed out about finances. I would sit and internalize and think about all of the money that we were spending on so many different things, all of the bills that we had that were outstanding, and wonder what I could do to bring in a huge influx of cash to resolve some of those issues. I'm not proud of it, but one of the things that I did was fantasize, and maybe fantasize is too strong of a word, but plan 
What would happen if my husband were to unfortunately pass away um, and I would be able to collect his life insurance? I would sit and calculate how much was coming in as a result of his untimely demise um, and think about how I would pay off the house, how I would pay off the cars, how I would put the money in savings for the kids um, and just be able to resume a life without stress. Of course, that brought on some guilt feelings, um, so I wound up deciding that that was no way to live and got better about budgeting. This made it so that I was no longer stressing financially and no longer fantasizing about my husband dying. So in part two of this clip, Malia explains her life as a working mother. And to all you working mommies out there, timeouts are essential. And I'm not talking about your kids' timeout. I'm referring to mommy timeouts. But Malia Jones is going to go into how that represents another part of stress in her life. As a working mother, I feel that stress is an everyday part of my life. We have to manage our families. We have to manage work. We have to manage everything that comes along with the household and try and find time for ourselves too. For me, I take it to an extreme because I volunteer for a lot of activities. I have a hard time saying no, which obviously creates even more stress in my life. I am admittedly not great about recognizing when I have reached my limit with regards to the stress in my life. When I do recognize the stress in my life, then I make sure that I remove myself from the situation. If this happens when I'm at home, I call these mommy timeouts. If it happens anywhere else, then I plug in my earphones, I crank up a really good song that is speaking to me at the moment, and I go for a walk. It is cathartic, it removes me from the situation, and I have a chance to get out of the environment that was causing me the stress to begin with, um, really just escape into the music and get some fresh air at the same time. What's interesting about when I plug in my headphones and go for a walk is that not only do I manage the stress better and manage my reaction to the stress when I come back to it, but I also feel like I've done something productive for myself. I've gotten out, I've gotten the blood pumping, I have um, just spent some time with myself, which is very, very rare. I'm trying to get better about being proactive as opposed to reactive to the stress in my life. So I'm scheduling myself to go on walks at least three times a week. For most people, that doesn't seem like a big deal. But for me, with everything that I have going on, it's a big deal. It's all about striking a good balance. In this next clip, Desia shares several ways she de-stresses from the complexity of life, right? Her mantras are kind of similar to mine. There's some similarities here and there. But her mantras are mainly rooted in wellness. I manage stress in various ways because I struggle with anxiety and sometimes acute depression. Um, yeah, so for me, these methods work. When I'm home, I when I'm stressed, I love to cook, I clean, and then I wind my day down. Especially on weekends, I wind my day down with um, self-care, which is doing my mask, taking a long, a nice, warm shower, and... Um, watching Netflix so comedy like because I love to laugh so I try to find a lot of comedy specials on Netflix or a documentary and why my day down and get ready for the new week ahead going to a day spa and sauna really works with lowering my stress level going into a sauna room a steam room a jacuzzi and just being there being present in that moment it really causes my stress 
stress level to go down. So I really recommend saunas to everyone. Groupon is a good way for, you know, folks to find base fun saunas that come with um, a good deal. Um, reading also helps me. But yes, like you, Nina, I love to travel. You love the water. I do too, but I find that cultural traveling really helps to re reduce my stress. You know, going to another state or another country and being immersed in that country's culture and not being so much of a tourist, but being like another local. It just makes me realize that, okay, life is bigger than me. And hey, I'm not the only one that's going through problems or issues. So I shouldn't be so downhearted. I shouldn't let my list of problems stress me out. Yes, it's my problem and it's still valid, but the world is bigger than me. So really cultural travel helps me. I love the beach. But more so, I love rivers. I love fresh water. So, for me, fresh water, like a river or a swimming hole, really helps my body to calm down. And then again, can we forget, um, how can we forget exercise? So for me, I'm not an exercise fanatic. Hiking is my go-to. Hiking, yoga, Jump rope helps me too. So those three things I really use to counteract stress. And sex, like, yeah, when I'm stressed, I have sex. But because I'm not getting any now because I'm single, um, I'm just drawing on all of the resources until I can get some good sex in. Yeah. Technically, I'm single until I'm married. I'm not sure about anyone. However, I'm just way past that um, whole phase. I'm, I'm over the whole phase, whole phase, where, um, you know, I would just randomly hook up with someone. Yeah, I'm past that phase. So until I start dating a guy or two, as I said, I'm single until I'm married. Um, yeah, dating a guy or two. I'll, I'll just draw on all my other resources to reduce my stress, to manage my stress when it comes along. And I think all creatives understand that when stress comes, it comes. Because your brain is always working. So lastly, I wanted to share, because this is one of the highlights of my vacation, was, you know, I always go to get a massage. And at this particular spa, it was so super gorge <laughs> and I'm about to fangirl for a second but having a massage like this type of service allows me to start de-stressing the whole de-stressing process so this is another regimen I do but I wanted to explain that I don't do it on a regular like I don't do it when I'm home and simply because I don't feel like I have the same type of experience or the same type of level of professionalism like I, I'd never meet that same massage therapist that has the same touch as these folks when I travel I don't know what it is but this whole process counts towards how I separate my mind from my body and I'm a massage for me no disrespect again but I just get more out of it and the level of service is always 10 times better when I travel and I recognize these are subject matter experts who are sought out and trained and they provide a level of service that I've yet to find anywhere in my local city. But that said, as I was getting my feet washed, she started saying this prayer and it's a it's in Spanish, but it has some Mayan connections to it. But that was the beauty of it. And I don't know Spanish, to be honest, so I can't even translate it for you. But I'm going to look to getting it translated. But it forces you to connect on a deeper level. And I recognized, you know, certain words as she was saying it. And it's definitely a call out to our ancestors to kind of help level set our lives, our energies, and just de-stress from it all. So I want you to take a listen. In la ketch, alaken, alaketch. Hunapku winik ahau. 
Saludo, agradezco y ofrendo las flores de mi voz a las energías rectoras de las siete direcciones. Siete vientos en armonía y movimiento generadoras de vitalidad. Bendigan estas manos que ayudan para que sigan compartiendo amor y equilibrio a los caminantes que visitan esta tierra y a mi pueblo. Ofrendo mis dones, saberes y virtudes para traer la paz, el bienestar y la energía que mi hermana Nina necesita. Nuestros ancestros nos legaron esta hermosa tradición sabiendo que una persona en equilibrio es igual a un mundo en armonía. Que te encante este masaje, esta ancestral medicina. Ajo. In la quech, a la ken, a la quech. Sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself, honestly, is not to think, not to wander, not to imagine, or even obsess. Just breathe and do it by taking deep breaths. Exhaling slowly and have the faith in you that everything will work out for the best. You have to firmly believe that. You are not required to set yourself on fire just to keep other people warm over things that you cannot change or control. And you know exactly what I mean. It's important for you to find that happy place, whether it's a person, place, or thing, this weekend, today, this year, and hold on to your happy. Whether you find joy in cranking up the volume of that good top five hip hop, jazz, gospel song that gets you going, Maybe it's indulging in a good Netflix comedy this weekend. Or it's just breathing your way out of that situation. Whether it's through sex, whether it's just having that mommy time out, or whether you're just having a moment in the car, maybe it's road rage, and you just breathe your way out of that situation. Find that mindfulness. And that's my Keep It 100 moment. Nina's purpose is to empower women to celebrate women's embarrassing moments. If you're too shy, nervous, or embarrassed to ask about sensitive girly stuff, you're in the right place. Smooches!